Charlie here again, episode number 20, how to get what you want. Now I've made a lot of extraordinary claims in this series. Uh, things like Challenger could have been avoided. Think about that. Uh, seven people died and the US and World Space Program was set back for maybe three and a half years. And I'm gonna make another one. Uh, <clears throat> The very simple process, and it works for me. I, again, try it yourself. Wait till you have some dilemma and see see what what happens for you. It's uh, a called AMBR. It's uh, again very simple. Nothing in here is as hard as physics, folks. So to think about, I I I, I often abbreviate this as Amber. And you can think of amber this way, <clears throat> the uh, resin, I think most commonly found in the Black Sea. We had, Junko had lots of amber things burned up in the fire. And I'm gonna use the fire as an example of how to use this process and uh, see what you think. So we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. So here's another theme. Uh, but what do you make your habits? I mean, so I'm into behaviors, but the behaviors that really count are the ones you do automatically and repetitively, we call habits. So you ever think about your attention, about how to manage where it goes, what you pay attention to and what you don't? Uh, do you spend a lot of time on Facebook? I don't. Do you read a lot of uh, news about Donald Trump? I don't. Do you try and stay informed enough as a citizen to make rational decisions? Yep, but that's it. Then comes your mindsets. And again, you can manage these two. We talked about this quite a bit, even managing your state of being by, by assessing your thoughts, change, assessing your emotions, changing your thoughts, put new thoughts and experience new emotions. And the behaviors in the end, all this is a setup for what you do. And when you get positive results, you get a self-reinforcing feedback loop, which we love. So to attention, it's a very limited resource. We actually process a very tiny amount of the information we get, especially visually. And we have a budget, like a financial budget. And just as one must not spend frivolously, one must ignore less important matters. For example, I don't sit in here and agonize over the fact that I can't afford a jet airplane, uh, but, I, but I like to have one, I suppose, although I'm not sure it's actually as good as flying international first class, or at least how it used to be. So I don't think about that. And then focus on a laser on your outcomes that you care about and I find it very useful to address unfortunate realities. I'll develop this much more fully in the blue section. So in the workshops, I like to sometimes do things that have some emotional charge because we remember things. So think about this in your own life. I can tell you exactly where I was the day that, that John Kennedy was shot. I wasn't a, a fan of John Kennedy, but it was such an incredible thing that stuck in my mind. I can remember exactly what it looked like in the basement of the garage at NASA headquarters when I found out the Challenger had exploded. And so there's a real connection between what we have experienced emotionally, good, bad, or indifferent, and what we remember. So throughout the workshop, I'm occasionally gonna give you significant emotional experiences. They might be fun, they might not, you might not like them. That's okay, if it helps you remember, it's what I'm after. So where attention goes, power flows, this is an interesting thing that I can tell you for real, the women have to probably believe this with no problem. Men's bathrooms are just plain nasty. I, I don't I don't know why they don't pay more attention, but it's I go in there in, in the airport and try and find the cleanest one and they're usually hard to find. But here's what's fun. If they put a target in here, like a lot of the companies put a little bumblebee, this is a urinal head in the house that burned down. Uh, men can't resist hitting the target. So this keeps the bath, bathroom much cleaner because what we're doing is we're managing where you put your attention. The little bumblebee is making you attend to where you're urinating. 
And as you might expect, I was in China and I came across a more advanced version. Men, I suspect, can't resist shooting at that soccer ball. Helps. <laughs> Isn't this kind of crazy, simple things that work? So, and I think it's very important to pay attention to unfortunate realities. Again, I'll talk more about this. This was my office, October 17th, uh, 2020. And you can see the beautiful views and the expensive furniture and my triple screen computer and so forth. There it is the next day, October the 18th. So how did I deal with this? I mean, what do you do? So the first unfortunate reality that I dealt with was that this had nothing to do with us or our neighborhood. This is a, this is a sign from our neighborhood. We had what's called firewise status. So uh, what we had done, had the fire department up there every year, inventory of the place, we trimmed the trees, we built the fire break. And so the first unfortunate reality is that uh, this had nothing to do with anything we did or could have done. This was, this was a climate fire. What, what do I mean by that? This was a fire, fire of such speed and intensity that the local volunteer fire department was completely helpless. So I, I live here in the city now and look out the window as a fire hydrant. There, in the forest, there's no fire hydrants. All the firemen can do, fire people can do, is find a place where they can clear away enough uh, combustible materials, the fire will stop. Well, this fire had a 40 mile an hour wind, 60 kilometer an hour wind. It had not rained in 30 days. Uh, this was all set up and we had the worst uh, fire season by far in Colorado history last year. And it's gonna keep coming because it's about the climate change. What's happening is as we mess with the climate, we, we, and we, we cause the uh, Arctic cooling to be less effective and it, it destroys the jet stream. The jet streams are caused by the temperature difference between the equator and the cool air. And the, so the air circulates up and because of the Coriolis effect, it's an effect of physics that I'm sure you've probably heard of, it makes it turn into the jet stream. And jet stream acts like this little kind of envelope keeping the Arctic in place and keeping our weather more or less like we like it. So what happens is when the jet stream breaks, you get the very, very cold air coming down or the very, very hot air coming up from Mexico. So, so the unfortunate reality is it has nothing to do with us we could not do anything about this, and we can't do anything about this happening again. And the unfortunate reality is this is going to get worse. So again, what most people don't understand is they think if you reduce our emissions, you reduce the heating. You don't. The carbon dioxide and methane layers are, are permanent in any sense of time that matters. And so if you reduce the heating, all you do is make the heating happen more slowly. You don't stop it. It's going to happen. So all these things are gonna happen and uh, nothing you can do about it. And so uh, home prices in neighborhoods like these will plummet as insurance dries up. So it's already happening in parts of Florida. So we got paid uh, well over a million dollars for our, our losses. That insurance costs $4,000 a year. I'm gonna assume that about half of that is the operating expenses of the insurance company. So how many people does it take to pay $2,000 for one loss? They're not going to. They're not going to insure these things. It's thousands of people, so this is not going to happen. So, other unfortunate realities is our steep mountain driveway was becoming ever more problematic. We might rebuild there if we do. I'll put in heating systems to clean this off, which is something I've not wanted to do because it, again, it exacerbates the environmental situation, and the COVID nineteen in my age is making maintenance more problematic. So. You know, 15 years ago, if something broke, a minor thing in the plumbing, I'd go on the floor and fix it. Now I'm not willing or able to do that. And it's hard to get people to come and repair things. And, in the, and, the, the, and things are aging in that house. That house is 30 years old. And so uh, the maintenance was bigger, bigger and bigger problem. And perhaps we're more fortunate than those that survived. We have resources, et cetera. So the mindset shift. Again, uh, pay attention to your emotions. This is a really interesting uh, book by Lisa Feldman Barrett. Uh, she changed my whole thinking about emotions. I bought into the idea that these primarily processed an organ near 
bottom of the brain called the amygdala? And she says, not at all. The, the, the brain, the whole brain is functioning and giving meaning to body sensations. I've talked about this before. Emotions are body sensations. And so what happens is that when you have a, an experience, an emotional experience, especially a troubling one, it's almost certainly your brain tying it back into something that seems similar to it, another past unpleasantness. So, you know, the remedy to this is to acknowledge that and let yourself go back and experience that emotion and get rid of it, breathe into it, as we talked about. Then our thoughts, these, this, I think, is part of the process in the cerebral cortex, that part's right. So what's our empowering mindset from the fire? Well, the first emotion is we're grateful for what we have, each other. As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Absolutely right. The people who get the most from 4D work are people who make this part of their lives. And that's what hundreds of people tell me. That's not my presumption. Our health, we lost a lot of things, but we got out with no health damage. Our family and friends have been very supportive and our resources. So on the other side, storyline, we are free of stuff. Now this may sound odd, but we tried to move to Japan. We quit because of what climate change was doing to that country, but uh, about four years ago, and we had so much stuff that it was impossible to, to move it. So we ended up putting it in storage. I don't know what we would have done with it. Everything that we own today will fit in a, in a pickup truck. So that's kind of a plus for our future. We are response able. We don't go, fall into victim or blamer. We remain able to respond to this and we are. And our thought is we can build fresh, happy lives. Uh, nothing prevents us from doing that. Behaviors, well, we're making choices. We're making good ones about where we live, what we buy, how we deal with our finances. And results, we have a happy life, quite independent of, of the fact that we lost that house. And you can do this. This is not hard. So for general behaviors, <clears throat> in our workshops, this is the behavioral change strategies. People write in their workbooks. I think this is really important. Sharing in the huddles, and I've found over the years, four, pe four people is about optimum. And then the context shifting worksheet to practice an application and give you new behavioral op opportunities. And repetition, I talked about the importance of habituation. You have the online tools and you have can, can develop action items using these for your life and your work. So many people ask me, is there a quick, easy way to habituate behaviors? They were interested in a shortcut for leadership. I've got bad news, there is no pill. It's like sports, music, and physics, one must practice. <clears throat> if, if In physics, if you didn't have to do the problems, it'd be easy. And this is the most popular nonfiction writer in the US, Malcolm Gladwell, wrote this book called Outliers. Mastery of a field requires 10,000 hours of practice. So it's interesting that with politicians serving sh such short terms, it seems to me about the time they learn how to do the job, most of them, they're leaving. So, and this is a, a, a videotape I'm not going to show you by Laura Boyd, a neuroscientist. She's interested in studying strokes. The primary change driver of change in your brain is your behavior. There is no drug that can help you do this. Nothing is more effective than practice in helping you learn. You must do the work. And the more difficult, the greater the learning. So when I was studying physics, we used to joke, you don't learn anything from a problem you can solve. And that's probably an overstatement, but what we're trying to say is, if it's easy, it's not nearly as effective as something that's difficult. So take this to heart. And positive results. And teams that work with us report their direct experience, much better environment, more effective, more fun. And the data track exactly with the numbers from the online tools. So I wouldn't advocate the online tools if I didn't have these hundreds of teams anecdotally telling me, yes, Charlie, when we, when we did your work, we got more effective, we had more fun, we got more respect. 
And all of those things tracked right along with the, the, the numbers from the tools. So <clears throat> following along, we're gonna start with the, the eight behaviors. The next one we're gonna do is appreciation. So I'm gonna start that in a few minutes. Thank you for tuning in, be safe, and I'm gonna stop the recording.